getting started here, I want you to think about on that next slide, let's think about what it is that we think of when we think of the word gift, right? What do we picture? What do we feel when we hear the word gift or we read the word gift, right? And there's a lot of different things that we can think of. So let's look at a few of those. The first one that I want to look at is the gifts that bring us self-confidence and per personal worth. And sometimes we kind of forget about these, especially because we don't always consider them as gifts. So I want you to think about what are some of the special abilities that you have? What are some of the talents that you possess, right? And these aren't even getting into the gifts of the spirit yet. Okay, so special abilities. Maybe you have a special connection to people or you can make special connections to people easily. Maybe your communication is good, right? Maybe your talents are singing. Maybe your talents are interpretive dance. I don't know. Right? So what kinds of things do you actually enjoy? In my profession, I, I teach people a lot about how to enjoy movement. Okay? So I, I work out at Mobara Fitness Resort here in Ivins, Utah. And we have people that come from all over the world. And they come seeking weight loss first, right? But what they end up realizing is that there's so much more that's underneath the physical needs. And one of the things that I like to point out is the gifts of things that we enjoy. And most of the time, we have forgotten how to utilize those gifts. And I, I bring that up with, the, with an experience in mind and something that I went through in my life. And I still get a little, a little shaky talking about it. But I married my husband in June of 2013. I'd known him since I was a kid. And he struggled with the disease of addiction from teenage years. He had recently gotten sober, and he had been sober for about four years before we got married. And after we got married, he relapsed a month later. So I didn't have a marriage with the man that I married, right? I had a marriage with an incredibly wonderful man, but an incredibly wonderful man who struggled with an incredibly powerful disease. So much so that for the three years that we were married before he passed away, I didn't, I didn't really enjoy a lot of that. And, and part of it is because I wasn't utilizing the gifts that I had known I already possessed to give me empowerment and strength during the time of my despair and resentment and sadness, right? Because there was a whole lot of that going on. And even though there was love underneath it all, the resentment and sadness could probably be felt more than anything. And something that is traditional for a lot of people who struggle with the disease of addiction is they go into isolation. So they isolate themselves from people that they love, from things that they love to do, and they don't do those things anymore. Well, I had started to do the same, right? I started to isolate myself from things that I love to do. Now, I grew up moving and dancing, okay? I love to do both. And I knew that I needed it. It was medicine for me. Well, during those three years, I didn't do a whole lot of anything, right? I was sad. I was filled with shame. I didn't want to tell anybody. I didn't want to share it. And I forgot the talents and gifts that I had already possessed that were something that gave me personal worth and confidence. So that's why I like to look at those as a gift, right? personal worth and confidence. So look at that. Pay attention to how often you're doing the things that you like to do. It can be crocheting. It can be pottery. And maybe as you get older, different things happen and you don't feel like you can utilize those things as well. Find a modification. Find a pace because it will bless your life and empower you with something more personal from the inside, right? And all these gifts and talents come from one person, right? That Alan produced us to beautifully, and he is the reason why we have some of these gifts within us. Okay, so things we enjoy, gifts of the spirit. Now, we all kind of think of gifts of the spirit when we think of, when we picture gifts and we picture it in more of a religious or church world, right? We think of gifts of the spirit. What are our gifts of the spirit? How do we find those, okay? How do we find our gifts that we've been given of the spirit and they're not always tangible and then we can't always see them, right? Where and how do we find those? Do we talk to people that we love? Do we ask them what their what our gifts, you know, the spirit are? They might see it better than we do. A really great tool that I've had that helped me to keep in touch with my gifts of the spirit is my patriarchal blessing, right? And luckily, 
the spirit nudged me early, early on. When I was 14, I got that baby and I have never regretted it. It has been a guide and a director for me to remember what my gifts of the spirit are. And if I don't feel connected to what those gifts are in that patriarchal blessing that I know is something that I need to develop and grow on. And then there opens the door for me to get closer to Christ, right? And that is how we're able to develop those gifts. So these are some of the things that we can connect with that bring us personal worth and self-confidence. Where we're connecting to the Savior, number one, that brings us personal worth and confidence. But sometimes it's not as easy for us to look at it that way. Okay? So thank you. Love and gratitude cultivate self-confidence and personal worth. Okay? Personal worth. You guys, most of the time, when we are feeling in despair or when we feel like we're alone, guess what? It has to do with our personal worth, right? Now, the ultimate giver of personal worth is our Savior, Jesus Christ. But sometimes, because we don't feel like we have personal worth, we don't feel worthy to connect with the Savior, right? So some of the things that we mentioned just previously, maybe some of those help to cultivate this, right? Gratitude is probably the number one thing that will cultivate self-confidence and personal worth, having gratitude. And I know you guys, we beat this like nobody's business. We got to be grateful, right? And it's not always easy to be grateful, but I promise you when you're looking for ways to be grateful, you will find ways to be grateful. The Lord will give you the opportunities to see and feel gratitude, whether it's in events, whether it's in experiences, or whether it's in something else that you witness someone else being a part of. Every Friday at the end of a week that we have with the guests at Movara, you know, mind you, they've been through a week of extreme work. They go there, they're waking up at five or six in the morning, they're stretching, they go on a hike for four hours, right? In the morning, they go, they come back, they hit another fitness or stretch class, or they have a lecture, they go to lunch, and then they, they go to three more fitness classes afterwards with dinner and a lecture maybe later. So they are working their tails off quite literally, okay? And at the end of the week, I like to ask them, what kind of magic did you feel or see this week? What did you experience? And so much of the time, the magic that they felt or seen was to witness it happening with somebody else, right? So don't, don't think that because you're not, you feel like you're not experiencing something that brings gratitude, that there's not things to fill and see gratitude in. And a lot of times, maybe we need to just look outside of ourselves to see where someone else is being blessed and for us to feel gratitude for someone else, right? So lots of different ways we can do that. All right, I want to talk about just how we can actually feel this. And I, I actually found these little quotes. You guys, I can't remember. They're in the gospel library. <laughs> and I think I, I looked up the word gratitude and I looked up the word, word love. And these were the things that actually stood out to me. We manifest our love for Heavenly Father by keeping his commandments and serving his children. Our love for those around us increases when we remember that we are child all children of God. We all carry Christ's light. Every single one of us. No one is exempt from carrying that light. The love that results from this realization has the power to transcend all boundaries. Right? And I, I did not have the words, so I, I'm glad someone else did that I could put up here. Right. Gratitude is, feel, is a feeling of appreciation and thankfulness for blessings or benefits we have received. As we cultivate a grateful attitude, we are more likely to be happy and spiritually strong. I sometimes struggle to feel grateful, especially when you go through moments that you don't feel the light of the Savior in your life. And something that that my occupation has blessed me with, and this is something I will always be grateful for, is to be able to have the opportunity to see the light of Christ in every single human being. And no one is exempt from the light that the Savior has given us. And that was the gift that he gave and that God gave us without us even really knowing that we possess it, right? And so for all of our brothers and sisters in and out of our faith, that light is there, right? Whether they believe in God or not, whether they believe in Christ or not, 
the light of the Savior exists in each and every one of them. And I have been blessed and I'm grateful for the opportunities that I've had along the way to see and witness and feel the light that's radiating from somebody else that maybe you would have never thought possessed the light. <clears throat> I'm humbled by that and I'm grateful for it. And I notice that when we are aware of that, then we build self-confidence and personal worth because we're connecting to the Savior on a level that he has given to us through other people and a gift that he has instilled in each and every one of us to be able to shine. And I'm grateful for that. So I hope that we can go about each and every day, maybe, maybe looking at people, our brothers and sisters, right? Every single one of us are connected in that way. And maybe seeing how we can be grateful for this, for the light that they have, for the light that they possess and the way that we can actually receive it right? And give it back. Because sometimes we've got to get the reflection from somebody else in order to shine ourselves. So being grateful. Guys, find a way to do it every single day. Some of us keep journals, right? Some of us have to write certain things along the way. Sometimes I honestly will just get my phone and I'll start doing like an audio message to myself where I'm remembering the situation. I'm remembering how I felt. I'm probably bawling most of the time. But it gives me the opportunity to go back and remember that feeling that so often will leave us once we just keep going about our day and about our lives. So, all right, this is a big one for me. We talked about the gifts of the spirits, our talents, the things that we enjoy, gratitude, which is a cultivator, right, of love and personal worth and confidence, which brings the light of Christ in us. And something that is probably really hard for a lot of us is the people around us that are our biggest challenges, okay? So I hope you can all right now with me take a minute and think about who are your greatest challenges in your life. Who are the family members, the friends, the coworkers that require a little bit more tolerance, first of all, probably, because we're all human, right? We're tolerant at first, <laughs> right? And that can, to, can to develop into like more of a patience, right? A love and an empathy afterwards, but that takes time and connection with our Savior to get those things, okay? Can we be open to trust in God and His plan? Can we be open to the trust that's required? Can we spend a lot of time trying to connect ourselves to God instead of trying to help them. So this, this particular piece in, in what I want to present today is extremely personal to me. And I have two, ah, I did not, I did not want to do this. <laughs> mm. I have two extremely wonderful gifts that come in the form of people in my life. And one of them was my husband who struggled with the disease of addiction and lost his life to it. And the, the other one is my brother who also struggles with the disease of addiction. And he has, for the last 25 years of his life, and he's still with us. But within that amount of time, it has been extremely challenging. And, and so often I have spent time on my knees screaming to God about what we can do. And I already know the answer because I've been through it before, right? <clears throat> We are powerless in someone else's ability to choose. Especially when it comes to being tethered or tied down by, by addiction. And I was talking to, I was talking to my therapist, and we were discussing this, and we were talking about, you know, the, the challenges that come from a family member who struggles with the disease of addiction. 
and how it it really does affect the entire family indirectly or directly and the family has to make choices to keep their boundaries but show love and in the midst of my talking to him and trying to figure out okay what do I got to do and I'm talking about this and this is what's affecting this and this is how my parents are being and I feel like the only sane one in the family like what am I going to do right and and he stopped me and he said, well, Tanisha, have you ever thought about how your brother is a gift to you and your brother is a gift to your family and your husband has been a gift to you and has been a gift to your family? And it's, it's like, it's something that you know that you can stop and say, well, what, what can I learn from it, right? What can we learn? How can we become better? But often some of those feelings are overrided by the frustration, the despair, the resentment, the pain, the heartache that exists in such experiences. But if we're able to find the ability to look upon those with the gift of empathy and to realize that they maybe are something that are given to us in order for us to build our own Christ-like attributes and qualities and in order for us to fine tune our gifts of the spirit, what a wonderful blessing they are in our lives. I wouldn't be able to be brave enough and strong enough and share my testimony the way that I love to do had I not had the experiences that I have been given through my husband and my brother. And they are gifts to me. And for that, I am extremely grateful. All right. Okay, so the next piece I want to pull in, and this is the most important piece of all, right? So we got we got the first one. We got just those general ones. Like, what are the things that we love to do? What are our talents and gifts? What are the things that bring us confidence and joy? Is gratitude involved in that? Who are the people in our lives that give us that opportunity? And then the last and greatest, and, and obviously, the best answer is the Savior. He is our ultimate gift, right? He is our ultimate gift. Ultimate gift. He is the way, right? If any of you are Mandalorian fans, he is the way, right? This is the way. The way is the Savior. I don't know what happened. I I used to love. I I didn't love Star Wars, but I love the Mandalorian. So go figure. There are there are so many ways that he does this. There's so many ways that he shows us that he is the gift. So number one, Christ gives us salvation and exaltation, right? He gave us the light from the very beginning. We have his light. Oftentimes we put that underneath something and it creates a shadow, right? We're not able to give the light at times, but it is there, okay? The light of Christ is our gift. And I want to read this scripture in Alma 37, 41. I think I have it on the next slide. Nevertheless, because those miracles were worked by small means, it did show unto them marvelous works. They were slothful and forgot to exercise their faith and diligence. And then those marvelous works ceased and they did not progress in their journey. So most of you can probably identify to where this comes from, right? When Nephi and Lehi had the Leohona to guide them in the wilderness, right? When they were doing the things that were connected to the Savior, when they were being obedient, that worked for them. It gave them direction and it gave them light. When they didn't, it ceased to work. It did not give light. It did not give direction. How often do we easily allow ourselves to be distracted, heavy, and not allow the work in the direction of the Savior to work in our lives? Often we can forget that because we just want to seek light, we will receive light. And it doesn't require us to do anything to earn it, right? We don't have to pay our way into receiving the light of the Savior. The light of the Savior is freely given and Christ gives us that direction by the sacrifice that he made and by the example that he has set for us. My favorite piece, and this I, this means a lot because so my, my late husband loved the word hope. He was excommunicated at a point in his life, and he brought himself back. He was a really good example of using the atonement in his life. He came back, and he got rebaptized. And his favorite word was hope. 
And I like to use that, that word and connection with the Savior because it is a gift that the Savior has given us, right? How does hope work in your life? Okay, and I want you to think about that. Like, how does hope actually work in your life? Oftentimes we say, oh, I hope for this or I hope for that. And we don't actually know where we're connecting or grounding the word hope to, right? What if we started thinking about that? Where's the word hope soiled in in every single piece of our lives that we try to utilize that word hope in? How do we use that? So I found a couple of things I liked in the scriptures, and I wanted to just kind of to bring those up. The next slide, I think I've got them written on there so I can read them. <laughs> They're long. I'll read them, though. Okay, so the first one, and I don't, God, I don't even remember. I have it up there. I have it on the last slide, so we'll show you. But And it came to pass that after Aaron had expounded these things unto him, the king said, What shall I do that I may have this eternal life of which thou hast spoken? Yea, what shall I do that I may be born of God, having this wicked spirit rooted out of my breast and receive his spirit, that I may be filled with joy, that I may not be cast off at the last day? Behold, said he, I will give up all that I possess, yea, I will forsake my kingdom, that I may receive this great joy. Okay, so he's working into giving us that humility and that desire, right? But Aaron said unto him, if thou desirest this thing, if thou wilt bow down before God, yea, if thou wilt repent of all thy sins and wilt bow down before God and call on his name in faith, believing that ye shall receive, then shalt thou receive the hope which thou desirest. And I, 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 I know that the whole scripture was long before we even got to the word hope, but how does that word hope reflect to the rest of the story, right? Listen to the king, how he's pleading, how he's asking, how do I get these things? Could hope actually be a part of his questions, right? This is what he's hoping for. When we long for questions to be answered, when we long for things to come that we don't see, right? We have a hope in Christ to receive those things. And the second one, Wherefore, whoso believeth in God might with assurity, this is from Ether 12, might with surety hope for a better world, yea, even a place at the right hand of God, which hope cometh of faith, maketh an anchor to the souls of men, which would make them sure and steadfast, always abounding in good works, being led to glorify God. So the hope that we have in us, where is it rooted? Where is it grounded? And who is actually the one directing the ship when we allow him to do that? It is my testimony that the Savior is the foundation. He is the soil to all good in our lives. And in the moments where we feel the distraction, the destruction, the chaos, and the frustration and resentment and heartache of the world, he could not be more present than he is in those moments but it is through those things that we have to move through hanging on to his light in order for us to receive peace and strength and courage from here, from him. I love him and I am so grateful for his example. I am so grateful for the blessings that the Heavenly Father has given me. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.